Diana Flint. I'm with the Quilts of Valor Foundation. I'm a, a volunteer member, a paid member for them. But we're a national organization that was started in 2003 by a Blue Star mom. Her name was Catherine Roberts. She had a son deployed in Iraq as a gunny sitting atop a Hummer, and she felt 10 seconds away from panic 24 hours a day every day. It was during this time her son was deployed that she had an idea of comforting veterans with quilts. Since then, more than 313,000 quilts have been awarded to living veterans in the United States, Germany, Iraq, Afghanistan that are still active, retired, and honorably discharged. The goal of the foundation is to reach 500,000 by 2024. With each quilt, the mission is to honor our servicemen and women, one human being reaching out and touching another without judgment, reaching out with acceptance and acknowledge their service and commitment to our nation in these trying times. A quilt of valor is made of three layers, and each layer has a special meaning. The top has many colors, shapes, and fabric to represent the communities and individuality. The batting is the filler. It's the center of the quilt. It's its warmth. It represents that this quilt will bring warmth, comfort, peace, and healing to the individual receiving it. And last, the backing represents the strength and support for the other layers. It represents strength of the person, support of the family, communities, and our nation. Each stitch that holds all the layers together represents love, gratitude, and sometimes the tears of the maker. There is a three-part message from the giver to the receiver. First, we want to honor Dana for his service. We honor you for taking the call and leaving behind everything you held dear to stand in harm's way in a time of crisis, protecting our freedoms and effects of war. Secondly, we know that freedom is not free. The cost of your freedom is the dedication of lives of men and women like you, and this quilt is meant to say thank you for your sacrifice. Finally, this quilt is meant to offer comfort to you and remind you that although your family and friends cannot be with you at all times, you are forever in our thoughts and our hearts. It's Stacy and Margaret, if you want to open that quilt and have Dana. And thank you for our, your service. Thank you. Gosh, okay, they're opening it up. Turn around. Uh, you, I think you need to put your, you got to switch corners, babe. Drop that one down. Grab the top corner there. It there it is. There it is. That's it right there. Okay, now. Just I, like if you're putting a shawl around something. Got it. Just let the back of it drop and wrap it around them. Okay, is wow. Is that, Holy cow. Is that <laughs> okay, drape it on. Let's do this. Oh. Lay that bad boy on. Oh, I'm getting buried in here. Oh. <laughs> Your mom you just sent me some photos <laughs> and I put them on pictures. They're on the back of that quilt down what? there in the bottom. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You see them down there? Yes. I don't know if you can. <laughs> no, I can't right now. I don't want to do it. Look at the. Oh, wait a minute. Is that my amber dog? Is that your amber That's dog? my amber dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's my oh, amber dog. Right, let me turn it so, okay. so that you can see that. Everyone, this is my husband, Dana. Howdy ho. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> And today I am interviewing my husband. He was a hunter first airborne. Whoa. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for your service. Thank you. She's gonna ask me some questions and I'm gonna do my best to answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have no idea what she's gonna ask me. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so, so Dana, how old were you when you decided you wanted to be a hunter and first? Ooh. What was going through your head at the time? Ooh. Okay. Um, wow. Didn't, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, long before I actually joined the service, uh, I honestly don't know where it came from or where it started. Uh, a movie? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but at some point in time, I remember it being relatively young, sometime in grade school, 
the 101st logo with the eagle on it. Uh, for whatever reason, struck a chord with me. I don't. I was obviously too young to know what it meant or really what it was, and I don't think I was in history and war movies or anything like that yet. But my best recollection is when I saw that that logo. For whatever reason that I just can't explain, it meant something to me, and it, it really kind of pulled me in. And um, and then as I got older, it just kind of stayed with me. And then I ended up in junior high school. And uh, once in a while, something would remind me of it or whatever. And I had a girlfriend through junior high and high school. And uh, we talked about growing up and all that kind of stuff like you do in high school. And uh, my decision at that time was to get away from the immediate family in the area and kind of support each other, you know, and kind of get on our own, not have an immediate safety net right there. And of course, my she knew and I knew my previous plan was to join the military. And uh, for me, it was like 101st is where I wanted to go. By this time I knew the, about, the, I knew the unit name and all this kind of stuff at that age. And um, so when I signed up, uh, I think I went and talked to a recruiter my junior year in high school. And I talked to the recruiter and then uh, did an early entry program, got signed up and all that routine. Uh, finished my senior year in high school and graduated. Got to do that. And uh, then immediately after graduation, hasta la vista. But at the MEPS station, I remember going in and seeing the MEPS station, the recruiter guy at the MEPS here in Gresham, actually. And um, I remember him asking me, you know, they got this thing called a dream sheet. <laughs> and the dream sheet basically is, you know, once they determine what your MOS qualification, what job you want, and you go through all that stuff, then they get to this thing called a dream sheet. Dream sheet. And... Uh, <laughs> They ask you, where do you want to go? And it was really simple for me. I told the guy I wanted to go to 101st Airborne Division. And he said, mm, you sure about that? And I said, yeah, I'm sure about that. That's where I want to go. And he says, well, you can't just go there. you know." And I said, okay, well, he says, well, here's a piece of paper. Write down your three places you want to go to. So on that sheet of paper, and somewhere I have a copy of it, I wrote 101st Airborne Division, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, 101st Airborne Division, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, 101st Airborne Division, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Those were my three choices. And uh, he, I remember him thinking I was just a nut. So he said, okay, fine, uh, give it a bash after you, you know, go through basic training and AIT and uh, see if they'll send you there. And off I went. And once I got qualified in there, good to go. Okay. And that was it. And I made it. Got to stay there. And I'm happy as lark I did. <laughs> Okay, so on the day that you found out you're accepted into 101st Airborne, um, what was going through your head that day, and how did that day go for you? What did you do? <laughs> what was going through that head of yours? Who are you, and what did you do with my wife? <laughs> uh, I was relieved because in order, okay, so we, people get sent to 101st for various reasons. But at the, at the time, I don't know how things are done today, but at the time when you're sent there, uh, I remember at the in-processing station, uh, you know, you can just feel it's a, it's a different place. It's, it's different, it, you know, it's kind of crazy. But they pretty much laugh at you. You know, like, they don't take you seriously. Because uh, I guess they have so many washouts go through there. And... Um, they tell you straight out, okay, so here's the requirements. Your PT is gonna be above standard from the rest of the Army. Your dress code is gonna be above standard from the rest of the Army. Your attitude is gonna be better than anyone else in the Army. And you must, at a minimum, be able to complete with high honors at the Air Assault School. If you fail in any of these things, you're gone. That's it, at any time. So if you blow it or screw the pooch anywhere, you're gone, that's it, you're out. And uh, I was like, let's go, let's do it. I was right where I wanted to be and I wanted that patch on my shoulder and I, I, I knew this was my one shot. So yeah, I took it seriously and I went for it and maxed out my PT test for years and uh, blew right through with top honors at the Air Assault School and continued on multiple other schools on the service. But uh, yeah, got to stay there and serve with what I considered to be the best of the best. I was very, very blessed to be there.
Here, gra grab a corner there, Stace, and let me see the back of this thing. Yeah. You, okay, that, you got a corner? Is that beautiful? Look at, look at, look at the, even the design of the oh eagles my are God. stitched in, Stacy. And they're all the, hand stitched on there. Get right? Look at that. that. Can you believe this? Look at this. Two of them, I printed the them all on fabric all for you. Is that is that insane. Okay, yeah, just well, swing, both of you just swing around. Like I said, and I'm hoping it brings you some comfort, and even if Amber passes on, you'll always have her with you. Oh, look at it. I've got Th this, is, this is nuts. This is nuts. This is actually his hand-stitched, all of these. Do you notice this? Look at yep. I know. Yeah, they're all hand-stitched on there. That is hand. crazy. <laughs> it is just, it's just... It's amazing. I mean, that's absolutely amazing. It's that fabulous, Dana. It really is. That is something. That is one. That's that's really thoughtful, and that's that's that is a, another level of attention to detail. Well, your your mom and sis asked me if I would make you one, and mm -hmm. and um, when he she told me it was the hundred and first airborne screaming eagles, that's why I did the panel that I did. Yeah. Well, and thank you. That's, that's wonderful. It's Diana. You're very it's welcome. more yes. beautiful than than I could have imagined. And even the even the eagle is <laughs> a screaming eagle. Yeah. Got his mouth wide open. That is just Same phenomenal. Way. Absolutely know, phenomenal. God. And and <laughs> oh. you don't have to answer this question. Okay. But what is the most memorable incident in the military? during your military career? Who? You know, right now, I mean, at this very moment, the one that immediately flashed to mind when you said that, um, it has to be, it, it's, it's kind of a weird one. How do you, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you explain this one? Okay. okay. <laughs> It's one of those things that if you know the story, it makes sense, but if you don't, it probably won't, so I'll just try to blast through it and make a little bit of sense of it. Um, a friend of mine, back in the day, we used to play a video game together, back in the early days of the Commodores, and one of the games we played was called Gunship. It was by a company called Microprose and the old Commodore 64s. Anyway, whatever. So, and we used to joke back and forth. You know, we'd go through, we'd blast this place up on our helicopters and this cheesy old video game and stuff. And we'd have a good time. We used to joke back and forth, you know, you know young people, you can't die. And uh, we used to joke back and forth. You know, we'd get done mowing this place out and succeeding this mission and stuff. We'd look at each other and we'd always laugh. And, you know, and he, he would always say the same thing. He would always say, and what was left? And I would reply, and one of us would say one half, the other would say the half. And I, w I or him would, would reply with burnt bodies and scrap metal. Boy. Yeah, oh boy. Well, you know, okay, the <laughs> context is everything. So, anyway, fast forward time later, uh, it just turned out that him and I were in a combat theater, and uh, it was it was an interesting time, and um, it was a bit chaotic, and stuff's just going off all around us, and. Um, you know, there's times in life when you can roll over and choose to die, or you can make the best of it. And uh, at that moment, I remember everything just, <laughs> just shit blowing up everywhere. And uh, I remember yelling. It was so loud, so loud. And I yelled over at him, and he was probably about six, ten feet away from me or something like that. And I yelled over him just out of nowhere. I don't know where it came from. I yelled at him. And what was left? And he replied back. He looked over at me in his big old, you know, big old smile and through these sunglasses. And he yelled back at me. He goes, "Burnt bodies and scrap metal," and everything is going to be fine after that. And we, anyway, whatever. We made it out of there. That was that was it. We made it. And okay. We, we both lived. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
It was crazy. It's crazy. Um. Shit. That's the first one that popped to mind when you asked me that. I, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I remember other things too. Like I remember the pride I felt, you know, uh, walking by division headquarters at Fort Campbell. And I, I remember in, the incredible pride of having my 101st Airborne logo on my shoulder that I wanted so badly when I was young. And now, now I wear them, my unit and my combat patches, I wear them proudly. And uh, I remember walking by division headquarters and I used to tap Abe, that's the name of the Eagle from 101st, he used to tap Abe and I remember looking up at that big flagpole and right there division headquarters and I had the most incredible pride in this nation, in this country and humbled feeling that I could be a part of that and be a part of that division that, you know, I was part of this place, uh, this moment in time and with, with 101st. And yeah, there's, there's things like that that really stand out that just put an indelible mark in me. Yeah. There's two polar opposites for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh, and I hear, and I got my Amber dog out here with us. Amber dog. She's in the picture now too. Here, say hi to Amber dog. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Beyond okay. that, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's 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 so far over the top. It's just. I, it, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? Well, I just turn around. I try to make them. I try to. If I, it was me receiving I them, I try okay. to make them nice. Now I've. <laughs> this. You, you go to some of the quilts of valor websites um, where they've awarded them. Some of them just want to use what we call patchwork. So they'll just take a whole bunch of squares and stitch those together. Right. So they'll open up what we call a jelly roll strip. They're all two and a half inch strips. Mm -hmm. And they'll just start sewing those together. And I said, that's okay if, if you need it, an emergency yeah. quilt, but not when you yeah. know that you're going to be in, doing an award like, okay. say, November. Man, I'll tell you, I've, I've seen quilts, but I have never seen nothing like this. Not even I, I, nothing. I, I, not, no, I don't even know what cat. That's not a quill. I don't know what you call. That's crazy. <laughs> that is insanity. I mean, it's, it is not. That, I don't know. I mean, I've seen quilts. That's, that's not a quilt. I don't know what you call this. It's a work of art. <laughs> it's, it's a work of art. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. that is a good way to put it. And and the thing about it too is that Rosa is the one that got it rolling for you. Fantastic. And she called me. So then, is so it was started with Rosa and telling me about it and then Diana just jumped all over with both feet and <laughs> service and please enjoy your quilt and know that you were never you're never far away from anybody's thoughts or anything well thank you diane i really appreciate it that is an immense amount of work and and the details staggering i'm, I'm, I'm honored and diana it's yes. margaret thank you for your service oh you're very welcome <laughs> absolutely yeah. thank you thank you oh there goes your dog i hear the hounds <laughs> yeah, yeah oh gosh yeah, I got one that's full-blooded Shih Tzu, and the other one, I think he's got Chihuahua mixed with him. He's not all Shih Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> we don't he care, do we? Nope. Dog, dog's a dog's a dog. We love them all. But if you have other people over there that's never been awarded a quilt um, through the Quilts of Valor, you can have, I sent my card over there. They can go to the Quilts of Valor Foundation and uh, yeah. get um, signed up for one. Sounds fantastic. So... Okay, well, thank you very much. All right, oh. Diana, thank you very much. Anybody thank got any, anybody? Thank you, thank, thank you. you. You're yeah. very welcome. Okay. I haven't seen Stacy since she was real little. Well, she's bigger now, I can assure you that. Hey. Well, I meant taller, okay, geez. Oh, <laughs> Stuck his foot in that one. Yeah, I did. I always get in trouble. I just keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks again, Diana. God bless you. And we'll talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, um, do you have any advice for those who are just trying to get in, who are 18 years old, just starting? Getting, getting in life into, or in service? Into service. Into yes. the service. Okay. 
Yes, a little bit. I mean, quick, quick and simple. Um, Especially this day and age. Yeah, in this day and age, it's uh, it, things obviously are different politically uh, from leadership, things like that. There's a lot of crazy. regardless of politics and all the chaos that's going on in the country right now. Um, when push comes to shove, hopefully not. But if push ever comes to shove and you're called to to have to go go into a combat theater or just go somewhere and and do your duty as a as a soldier um, overseas or you know, you know something like that and you're called to do your job politics and everything suddenly kind of go out the window you'll always have your officer straight out of West Point that doesn't know Jack he's an idiot okay these new butter bars from West Point are just idiots till they get a little experience outside of them you, you know there's going to come a time that you're going to have to do your duty and you need to do it with the utmost pride the utmost respect the utmost dignity and always remember it every single moment of the day whether you're awake or you're asleep everything you do everything you say every step you take every action you make everything is a representation of the United States of America. Do nothing that would bring discredit on this country at any time. Beyond that, are you questioning if you're the kind of person that needs to go in the service or not? Only you can answer that. But one thing's for sure, not everyone's cut out for it. Uh, if you're not sure and you want to give it a bash, go for it. They'll weed you out and you'll weed yourself out. Um, but you'll know in your heart if it's made for you, you will know. But don't, don't be one of those people who's only, only joining for the college. Yeah, because yeah, I met a lot of those in the service, and boy, that's that's a hindrance. That's that's how you take. That's how you cost lives. If you're there just to get college education, go somewhere else, because lives are at stake. That's it. You need to be in it because you need to be in it, not for that. That's a bonus if you like the military and you believe in what you're doing. By all means, take advantage of this of the opportunities in the service as well, but do not let that be your primary target. Bad idea. Well, thank you, Dana. That's it for for now. And I've learned some more about my husband. I've been <laughs> married to you how long? Twenty two, twenty three, something like that. Something like that. Twenty three. Yeah. Mudding it up a little bit there. Yeah, something so, like that. So yeah, that wow. was kind of cool. I learned something about you. Oh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.